I was studying in an Orthodox yeshiva. So can you imagine I'm having the Talmud, the Talmud, the, the, yeah. the oral law, the Talmud on one hand and the New Testament on the other hand. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, this is, this is two Judaisms and each one of them is claiming for the truth. Go on, I'm excited to hear your story. What was your moment where you knew that Jesus was the Messiah, the Redeemer of Israel, Savior of the world? So remember, I was born and raised in a kibbutz, no truth, no God. I opened the New Testament for the first time of my life. And I'm sure this is, the Pope wrote it, of course, and I'm sure it's an anti-Semite recipe for how to kill Jews and stay alive. I'm opening the Gospel of Matthew, mm -hmm. and I'm shocked because the first line, this is the, 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 the dynasty, the, the dynasty of Yeshua, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So I'm going back to, the, to this person who gave me the New Testament and I'm saying, is this the real New Testament? That this is what you meant? I said, yes, this is the New Testament. And I was shocked because I keep reading and reading. And by the conviction of the Holy Spirit, I know I'm reading for the first time in my life. I'm reading the truth and I don't know what to do with it. Wow. I'm shocked. Wow. Wow. So take me back because you had a, a very a Jewish upbringing yep. in a kibbutz, which is con considered what? Uh, uh, socialist? Now, or remember, the, even the word kibbutz is gathering. Right. So the parents of my father were born in Persia, in Iran. Okay. The parents of my mother were born in Belgium. And my parents, of course, were born in Israel, but met on a ship. Really romantic story on a ship. Fell in love, went back to the kibbutz and raised, raised the family. And I was born in the kibbutz in the northern part of Israel. A socialist, ultra a, a secular kibbutz. Never heard of God, let alone that he has a son. <laughs> <laughs> and this is how I was raised. Now, I can give you an example of what's, what's a kibbutz life. Yeah. How socialist the, the mentality. So my parents were married and they get a gift from the relatives that live outside of Israel, relatives that my mother had. They get a, a, a frying pot, it's something really cheap, but they got a gift from, for, for, the, for the wedding. The next morning, a knock on the door. A member of the kibbutz is coming to, to ask, where's the gift that the kibbutz received for your wedding? Right. And my mother was shocked. What do you mean? That's my gift. Now in the kibbutz, there's words you are not supposed to say. There's no my, there's no I, there's mm. no for me, there's no me. There's us, mm. there's we. So the member of the kibbutz is saying, give us the gift, what are you? And my mother said, no, yes, no, yes, no, give us the gift, no. They have to bring it to the, to the gathering. Every Saturday night, there's a gathering in the kibbutz where all the members are voting on the most important stuff in the world, everything that has to do with the, with the community life in the kibbutz. Right. So they have to vote. What do we do with this stupid gift right. that my parents got 200 years ago when they got married? So there's shouting and yelling in this meeting. All the members are shouting and yelling. What are we going to do with a gift? Finally, a compromise. They reached the a compromise by midnight. What are we going to do? My parents can, leave, can keep the gift, but never use it. So till this day, the <laughs> oh, gift man. is on the, on, the, on the upper closet in my parents. In my parents today. Today, because my parents still live in the kibbutz. Oh, so if that, if, if that happens when you bring a frying pan to the kibbutz, what happens when you bring Jesus to the kibbutz? <laughs> oh, so, so when that happened, a member of the kibbutz, another member, stood up in the dining room in front of everybody. I thought she was going to kill me. And she said, Golan, we failed in our education because of you. <laughs> the whole kibbutz failed in, the, in its education because of me, because I believe. But I'll tell you what happened when Danny Another friend of my kibbutz, when Danny returned as the, as, as the Indian monk from India, uh -huh. oh, the kibbutz clap is oh, oh, how so wonderful. spiritual, right. so spiritual. Right. But when I embraced the Messiah of Israel, you failed. The, we failed in your education, Golan. You failed us. I failed the whole kibbutz mm. because of this faith. Wow. So, so how did this change your life? Because not only were you not expecting it, of course not. I never looked for God. He was looking for me. In many cases, when a Jewish person like us comes to faith, we say, I don't want it because I know what it means and I know what the consequences are. You know, I just opened up my emails today. I dare you to try to convince me to read the New Testament. Exactly. There, there's so much hate towards uh, Messianic Jews, towards the message itself. Um, and we love our Jewish people. Till this day you in know, the park, you know, we take the dog out. Yeah. I'm talking to Israelis, religious and secular, and they think they know better right. the Messianic faith, even though they never read the New Testament. And they tell right. me, 
what, 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 what's, what's the story all about? What is Christianity? And I tell, did you ever read the New Testament? Right. No, of course not. What? You never right. read the New Testament, but you're telling me what I believe in? Right. So, so, so you're right. The challenge is, to, like for me, to read the New Testament for the first time. Yeah. And let God be God. Let, let the Holy Spirit do what He did for me. So I was born in Kibbutz Malkia, raised, raised totally secular, you know. And then a miracle happened. In the kibbutz, we had an ulpan. A ulpan Hebrew, is? Ulpan is um, like, a, like a college for Hebrew mm -hmm. for new immigrants, like right. a class for Hebrew for, for one year for new immigrants. When they come, they study, the, the study Hebrew yeah. and work in the kibbutz. 50% 50, 50 of the time study Hebrew, 50% work in the kibbutz. Yeah, when I first came to the kibbutz in 97, I, uh, to Israel, I went straight to the kibbutz, right into ulpan to learn Hebrew. So in the ulpan, most of the most of the students were from Russia, from Ukraine, new, right. new immigrants. But praise the Lord, there was a student from Oregon who came as a, as a volunteer to the kibbutz. But he, he loved Yeshua. I didn't know anything about it, but he loved Yeshua. Therefore, he loved Israel and he wanted to be in the kibbutz. So he was accepted to the Ulpan and we used to work together in the kibbutz. That's how I knew him, this angel that God sent. Wow. And that was the first believer I ever saw in my life. Mm. Now you're saying, Golan, how did he witness to you? What right. did he say? And if I try to think about it, he said nothing. But I, I saw something in his eyes, something in his behavior. And I thought to myself, what manner of man is he? So it's like, I know he's not Jewish, but, but what kind of a gentle is he that loves the Jewish people? There was something about him that I really, really loved. And that was the, my first introduction to a believer in Yeshua. But he left after a few years and I was left in my sins. But God didn't give up on me. He sent this time an angel from Korea. Now you wow. can't get more gentle than this. This is like the end of the world, <laughs> Korea. And an angel from Korea that came, like this man from Oregon, came to study in the open. And that was the second time I saw a believer in Yeshua. And we became friends, this angel from Korea and myself, we became friends. And you ask, well, what did this angel tell you about Yeshua? How did he witness to you? You know what he told me? What? I don't remember anything, nothing. But I could see the glory of the God of Israel in this angel's eyes. Wow. And I, and, and I ask, I dare to ask the question, finally, what do you believe in? What is it? And this angel told me, well, it's the New Testament. So the New Testament? Right, what is that? What, what the Christians ah. believe, those, you know, Christians in Hebrew, it's almost like a curse word, right. curse word, Nutsrim. What the Nutsrim believe? She said, I don't know anything about Nutsrim. It doesn't exist in the Korean language. Hmm. They say Christians, Messianics. But read the New Testament if you want to find out what I, uh, what, what I believe. So I went to my parents' house and praised the Lord. They had a Bible where they, the Old Testament, the New Testament they had translated. They a complete Bible in your they house. Had, they got as a gift. From, from somebody that used to give free Bibles to the kibbutzim. So my parents had the Bible. So I'm, you know, I'm opening in Genesis. I'm, I'm looking for the New Testament. Where's the New Testament? It's got to be somewhere. <laughs> in the middle, in the beginning, I don't know. But it has to be somewhere. And then I see the Gospel according to Matthew. And I'm like, oh no, oh no. Well, if I knew something, I didn't know much, but I knew the New Testament was written by the Pope. That, <laughs> that much I knew. <laughs> And I thought to myself, okay, 2,000 years of anti-Semitism done by so-called Christians, right. the New Testament must be a recipe for how to kill a Jew and stay alive, right? Yeah, yeah. And I open and I see the genealogy of Yeshua, right. son of David, son of Abraham, and I keep reading, I keep reading, and it's Israelis in the land of Israel talking Aramaic and Hebrew, yeah. and the disciples of Yeshua are, are, are willing to give their lives to the fact that he rose on the third day from the dead. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, what? Is this the New Testament? This is nothing of what I thought is the New Testament. Same. No anti-Semite, no Pope, no Catholicism, no, no right. you know, it's just witnesses on the resurrection of Yeshua, on the life of Yeshua. Yeah. And, and by the conviction of the Holy Spirit for the first time in my life, I knew I was reading the truth. How old were you? 24, 25. Wow, okay. So, so but by praise the Lord, yeah. after uh, after God saved me, I married I married this Korean angel. I always say we have two monkeys and a dog, a boy and a girl, <laughs> a boy and a girl and a dog. Wow! And and but but see, your quest didn't end there. You understood. It only began. Yeah, you understood that this was the truth. 
but it, but it intellectually you had to go farther. Now, when God was working in my heart uh, and, and on, the, on the truth of the New Testament, I was studying in an Orthodox yeshiva. So can you imagine I'm having the Talmud, the Talmud, the, the, yeah. the oral law, the Talmud on one hand and the New Testament on the other hand. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, this is, this is two Judaisms and each one of them is claiming for the truth. Right. And now I'm thinking, what's, what's, the, the, what's the natural or the supernatural continuance of the Old Testament? Mm -hmm. The Mishnah and the Talmud or the New Testament? So I'm studying the Talmud in the yeshiva and I'm reading the New Testament at home and I'm thinking, what's, what's more, what's the natural continuance? Mm -hmm. What's the better continuance of the Old Testament? And God showed me that it has to be the Judaism that was fulfilled in Yeshua, mm -hmm. the New Testament. Yeah. And both of them, both of them are Jewish, Rabbinic Judaism and Messianic Judaism. And I knew, I knew that what I was reading, what I was learning in the Yeshiva couldn't be, couldn't be the true Judaism that continues the Old Testament. And I'll give you an example, the Mishnah. The, the, from the beginning, Tractate Brachot, mm -hmm. the Tractate that teaches you how to pray. Mm -hmm. It starts with, with, with an argument. Mm -hmm. And that's a revolutionary literature for the Jewish world. Never in the Jewish world, until the Mishnah, we had this kind of literature that starts with an argument. Mm -hmm. Argument with Rabbi Gamliel and Rabbi Joshua and, and, and the other rabbis are saying the opposite. And they're, about they're arguing... When to, about when to, when to when, say the Shema. Right? Exactly, yeah. when to pray the Shema. Right. Be, before the Shacharit, before the, before the morning prayer. Right. And I'm thinking, this is... Is this, this is what, this is what continues the messianic hope of the Old Testament? Right. Can't be. Because the Old Testament doesn't end on a happy note. It, and it gives, it, and it gives a, a, a future anticipation and of something exactly. coming. Exactly. It's like a sequel, you right. know what I mean? Right. <laughs> so, so I'm reading the, I'm, I'm studying the Talmud arguments and I know this kind of literature was never heard of in the Jewish world. It's, it's more of a Greek. Philosophy. Exactly. Greek philosophy exercise for your mind, mm -hmm. but it has nothing to do with the narrative that the Old Testament ended with, especially with Malachi, right. with the prophet Malachi, which says, I bring you Elijah the prophet before I come. Right. And then I open the Gospel of Mark. Yeah. And which it is starts... Chrono chronologically, is, could be exactly. considered the first Gospel. Exactly. And it starts with what is considered the last prophet, Malachi. Yeah. So the Gospel of Mark starts exactly where Malachi ends. And I'm saying, this is the same genre. This is the same. This is continuing the narrative, right. unlike what I'm studying in the yeshiva. Right. So in my mind, there's a debate, which is the true Judaism of God? Mm. Is it the rabbinic Judaism, which I'm in, in the yeshiva two days a week? Or is it the, uh, the Judaism of Yeshua, the messianic Judaism? And I had no doubt in my mind, even though my heart wanted to lean towards rabbinic Judaism. Of course. I had no doubt in my mind that the truth what is the, it was in the New Testament. My goodness. Yep. And how did this change you? So from then, when, when Yeshua entered my, my, my heart and I decided to devote my life to Him, I knew that I want to serve Him. I knew that I want to do everything I can to serve His purposes. Wow. And by the grace of God, I find myself serving in the, in the Bible, Israel Bible of the College, One for Israel, serving as a teacher there. That's right. So you're, you're a professor. And you have a very uh, extensive education on Second Temple literature. Literature, exactly. That's what I like because this is where, st when the First Temple was destroyed, yes, and uh, some kind of a new Judaism, a new covenant, covenant right. had to rise. Right. So I like what you said about how the fact that there was two new covenants. Exactly. Which one is the which true one, one is the two? Yeah. Which one is the New Testament? Is it the Messianic New Testament, or is it the, the rabbinic. rabbinic New Testament? Because when you when you say the New Testament, they go, oh, that's not but it had to have been one or the other. And I challenge every, every Jewish or anybody that, that, that watches us, take a copy of the Mishnah, start reading the Mishnah and ask yourself, is this even the same genre? Right. Can this continue the narrative of the Old Testament? Mm -hmm. Or is it, you know, scholars, Israeli scholars, even religious scholars are saying, this is a revolutionary literature, the Mishnah. Never heard of in the Jewish world. This is a complete, it does, it's not even connected to the Old Testament. The Mishnah is an independent literature that can, it doesn't need the Old Testament. That's mm. what the scholars are saying. Mm -hmm. It's an independent literature. I'll, I'll give you an example. We talked about tractate brachot, yes. how to pray. Uh, d d do our, our viewers know that there's no one commandment, not even one commandment in the Torah to pray? 
Now, of course, Moses prayed, right. Abraham prayed, right. Aaron prayed, Daniel prayed, but yeah. not even one commandment to pray. And the first tractate in the Mishnah is how to pray. I'll and, and, and I'll give you an example. In the Talmud, it says, a Jewish man must pray or bless 100 blessings a day. A Jewish man must say, recite 100 blessings a day from the Siddur, of course, from the Jewish prayer book. Where can you find this? in the law of Moses, mm -hmm. when there's not even a single commandment to pray. Right. Can you imagine that? That's why scholars are saying, this is the revolutionary literature, unlike anything the Jewish world knew. Now you pick up the New Testament and that's a narrative. Narrative like Genesis, like the book of Samuel. Right. It's a narrative which continues the hope of the, 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 of, of the, messi the messianic hope yeah. that the, the, the Old Testament left us with. Wow, wow. So Golan, you're a man, you're, a, in my opinion, a, just a wonderful representation of a person that walks with God. Praise the Lord. You love him with your heart, but you love him intensely with your mind as well, which I love. And I love taking your courses and I love learning from you. And I'm so grateful for your, your testimony. You know, how, how, and you, you've, been, you've been walking with, the, with uh, the Lord for how long now? Something like 20 years, praise the Lord. He's with, walking with me, holding me. Carry, here in Israel. He's carrying me on his shoulders for 20 years. And what years. have you seen here in Israel over the last 20 years with regards to the Spirit working amongst our Jewish people? So I'll tell you, this is fascinating. Fascinating because we, we take the dog out and we meet Israelis yeah. of every walk of life. We meet secular Israelis, ultra-Orthodox Israelis, just religious Israelis. And they love hearing the gospel. There's, honest to God, there's a religious person who just, uh, he told me that yesterday, every time we talk about Yeshua, he told me, you know, I want to believe, what's he called, Christianity. I want to believe this faith, but I can't because, because I want to keep the tradition. That. I've heard that And I asked him, I asked him, this religious, amazing guy, became my friend in the park, you know, because he comes with his dog, I come with, with my dog became my friend and I tell him, why do you want to embrace the Messianic faith? And he said, because it's universal. It goes to the entire world. It blesses the entire world. And he admits rabbinic Judaism is closed. Right. It's, it's an in-house thing. And if anybody knows the Tanakh, the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, they would know that it's for the entire world, so I that it's so, universal. So, so he tells me, yeah, because you have a new gospel for the entire world. And I tell him, no, it's not a new thing. Even in Genesis 12, God is promising Abram, by your seed, I'm going to bless the entire world. So there's nothing new under the sun. I tell this religious person, it's in our Old Testament. It was promised to Abram, wow. fulfilled in Yeshua. Wow, praise God. Praise God. What a wonderful time here in the Amen. eucalyptus forest um, here in Israel. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you for watching this video. If you have questions, if something kind of was struck in your, in your, uh, I do. I love hugging Golan. <laughs> My brother. My brother. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sharing your amazing testimony, the testimony of God working in our lives. If you have questions for me or for Golan, leave them in the comments section. Uh, and feel free to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and just uh, track with us. Follow us along on our channel and follow Golan at One for Israel and uh, the amazing work that he's doing there. Uh, thank you. Thank God. God bless you all. See you in the next testimony. Amen.